Hi, Brother Stephen here with the Raritan Oratory at the Shrine of the Blessed Sacrament here in Raritan. We're going to go over uh, how to set the Missal for Mass. This is the traditional Latin Mass. So the first thing that I always tell servers, even priests, <laughs> is to grab the Ordo. So every year, there's a, um, there are different uh, people who produce the Ordo, which is essentially all of the different rubrics that pertain to the Mass, and actually the, the Divine Office, the Liturgy of the Hours, this is both the extraordinary form as well as the ordinary form. The church authorizes these books because this is basically the marching orders for how to set up. So I just have to find real quick the date. This one is uh, created by the Priestly Fraternity of St. Pe St. Peter. So, what is it? What's today's date? <laughs> Today is uh, March, right? Yeah. March. All right, so we have Saturday, March 4th, and we are in Lent. And so it says here, maybe I should get a close-up here. The first column, or the first column is the date, then it tells you what it is. Then the class number, so we see the second, uh, second class feast. One is the highest, so second is pretty high. The color is V, which is violet. Then we have the Gloria Creed, it says there's nothing here. Then it says the preface. The preface is Lent, and I'll show you where that is. The commemoration is for St. Casimir. That's interesting because it wasn't that in the book. And then we have uh, Vespers you can ignore because that's for the Divine Office. So the first thing that I always have people look at is for the proper of seasons. Proper of Seasons will always be in the first part of the Missal. The way it flows is every Missal has to have the uh, general instruction in the middle, in the beginning, and then it has stuff pertaining to the liturgical feasts, uh, liturgical calendar, excuse me, um, and then other instructions, etc. And then it begins with Advent, and the Proper of Seasons continue on for the first part. Then you'll get to the, the second half. I mean, the middle will be the canon itself, which is uh, during Mass where the priest is praying the prayers over the offering and confecting the Eucharist. And then the second half is, uh, those are the days that are, fall outside of the privileged seasons. There may be some extra for like Easter because of just uh, space in the book. And then you also have the saints of the day. As we mentioned, we have a commemoration. Uh, and then the commons, which is essentially just prayers for certain categories of saints that may not have particular proper prayers for them, but they will fall in, say, in the category of virgins or popes, things like that. And you go to the commons if you need that extra prayer. So in order to be able to understand this flow, you really have to have a good sense of how the mass flows. What are the different parts? What are the different prayers that the priest is praying? That's all prerequisite, and I'm not going to go through that right now. I'm just going to go through setting it up. So we know we are in Lent. So we're going to have to find the Saturday. So we have the Sabato Quatuor Temporum Quadragesima, which is the Saturday before the second, uh, the second Sunday in Lent, essentially. And you'll see that there, were, there are different options the priest can take for the first reading, prayers, etc., the gospel. Um, and so Father this morning chose one and, and ran with it. And that's why the purple is set to this. Usually, you don't have all these options. Usually, say it's the ferry of the second uh, day within the second week of Lent. You'll see that it has the set prayers and readings, and that's it. And then right afterwards, it goes into the third day of that week. So normally, you just set to the day, and that's it. Today was unique where there were different options. But that's good because you need um, for the prayers, you know, the offertory, uh, I mean, sorry, the, the introit, the, or the collect in the beginning, the offertory, the secret prayer, post-communion prayer, etc., all of that stuff. The second tab that, this doesn't change, but just to be aware of, um, we have this green ribbon that's stuck in the order of the Mass. So before the canon, actually before the prefaces, you have basically the flow of the Mass. If the priest ever, for whatever reason, blanked on what he was supposed to do next or what he was supposed to pray, there is produced in this book, in the Missal, every, the whole flow of the Mass from beginning to end so he can uh, refer here. We keep it on this page, 225, for the Orate Fratres, for any priest that need it to just finish out. 
after the Arate Fratres goes into the, um, you know, the secret prayer for the MC, so on, for those who will be doing that. Then we have the, as I mentioned afterwards, you go right into the prefaces. So the prefaces begin with the ones set to notation. So that will be the Misa Cantadas and the Solemn Highs. They will always need the, the notated prefaces. However, as you can see by the, we did a low mass this morning. So you see by this white ribbon, we set to the without, without notation. And you notice at the end of the ones with notation, you get to on prefaciones sine cantu. Sine is without, cantu is singing. So the preface is without singing. And then you can find it. And it's the same order as the ones notated. Um, same order, just without notation. So it said Lent, quadrigesima is, is Lent in Latin. And uh, you just find it. And that's uh, what you're going to set it to. We also had a commemoration, as I mentioned. Oh, we did the wrong month, that's why. So you just find, as I mentioned, there's uh, after the canon, after, yeah, after the canon, you get, get into the, the, feet, the proper saints of the day. And so there's a calendar. So we get to Marti as, as uh, the festivals of March. We're on March 4th. You find it, March 4th, day, day 4 of, Mar of, the, of March, you see St. Cashmere. And these are the prayers that the priest would be praying um, along with the prayers of the day. If it's a, if it's a mass during, during not a privileged season, so what we call ordinary time in the Novus Ordo now, you would just pray these prayers along with the commons because as you can see, not all of the prayers are here. So there would be other prayers that you would have to go to the commons for, for this, for this feast. However, because it's a commemoration, since we are in a privileged season, that of Lent, he, the priest is going to pray the Lenten prayers first, and then he's going to come back here for three throughout the Mass. He's going to come back for the Orazio, which is the Collect, the Secret, which is which he prays at the um, Offertory, and then the Post Communion. The Post Communion is at the very end of Mass. So those are the only three that you will have to set for. Outside of that, you are good to go because then the MC should know from there how to work the book for the canon of the Mass. There are, as I mentioned, sometimes where you'll get commons, so I will just go over the commons for you. So here, it does say that, you know, all right, so it's the confessors of, of um, popes that are confessors. It also helps to know a little bit of Latin, at least words, um, because everything in this book is Latin. So if you need the instructions and you can't read them, there's not an alternative. These are votive masses. Okay, here we go. That's interesting because he's a king. Oh, not a not a pontiff. Okay, there we go. So you're going to come to the com, com, the common of confessor popes, even though he's not a he's not a pope. Confessoris non pontificis. There must be a section that's says he's not. There we go. And you know this because if you look for the day, March fourth, you'll see in red. It says to um, take the common of confessors who are not popes. And then it also says place 25. What that means is you come to the confessor. And it should have, maybe this one doesn't have it. Normally they have letters and I don't see it here. I mean uh, numbers. Yeah, this one doesn't have it. Some versions, that's interesting that it mentions. Some versions will have numbers, like at, at the beginning of each section. See how it says one? There'll usually be a second option if they have one. 
Yeah, there's a second option here. And they normally have um, numbers in square brackets next to the readings and prayers, etc. And so that's what this, this 25 should connect to. However, it doesn't have that in this book. So you're going to have to just choose one, I guess. Or, for, or reference another source to get a sense of uh, which one should be prayed or is I, the ideal to be prayed. Other than that, that's, um, as I mentioned, so the prayers he has here is the colic, the secret, and the post-communion. But there are other prayers, such as the prayer at, uh, at the uh, offertory. Uh, there's also the readings for the day. So this wouldn't pertain to him since we're in a privileged season. But if you were going to pray outside of a privileged season, the Mass for, uh, you know, the common confessor is not a pont pontiff. You have the different readings here and the diff all the prayers that you, the priest would need to pray for the entire Mass. So that's the entirety. I know there's a lot of um, information packed into this, but that's the part that you would need to understand. So the MC, as I mentioned, prerequisite, very strong prerequisite that they understand the flow of the Mass, what prayers the priest is praying and what part, and they need to have that understanding, uh, at least somewhat versat versatility, because um, without that, you're going to be lost. From there, you know what you're looking for. The way it works is always the proper seasons takes precedence. If there's a saint, sometimes the saints get bumped even by the preference of the, of the season, which we are in currently. Um, then once you have the prayers set for the day plus the, the, um, the saint, if the saint is lacking any prayers and you need them, Again, this is something you would have to also have a good knowledge of liturgical rubrics around regarding the calendar. Then you would look to the commons for anything that is lacking between the day and the, and the saint. Um, plenty of that happens in, say, ordinary time or the times that are in between the privileged seasons. But we are in a privileged season, so it's more streamlined. It's usually Lent with commemorations. Uh, the other thing that you would need to consult this for would be the preface, of, as we covered earlier. The preface, if you're doing a sung mass, would need to be the notated version. And if it's not a sung mass like we did this morning, it's the non-notated version. But it's important to find um, the actual preface. The last thing I want to mention is, so it all, it's all, all says Lent. But for instance, we'll, we'll go down to March 25th since it will be a first class feast for the Annunciation. It says the preface will be BVM, which is the Blessed Virgin Mary. It, it, I want to stress this because obviously this is all in Latin, so it's not going to say... Um, actually, it does, which is interesting. But because it, it's, the Latin is very, very close. B Maria Virgine. And then this would be the one you're setting to. Whenever you get to the, one, the prefaces for the Blessed Virgin, this is actually one last note before we close out. I'll keep the non-notated one. You'll see all this red here. Basically, what this red is saying is for the different feasts that pertain to the Blessed Virgin throughout the year, as well as different votive masses, have different parts that are inserted right here where you have the three stars, the three red stars during the preface itself. So it's always important that if you are doing a mass, whether it's a votive mass or, or a feast, of the Blessed Virgin. Consult this here. Again, you're gonna to need to know some Latin because it doesn't say, uh, doesn't have this in, in English, but it's pretty straightforward. I mean, you have the Immaculate Conception here. You have um, the Seven Sorrows. You have uh, Our Lady of Mount Carmel. You have the Blessed Virgin for all for all the, all the other feasts, okay? You have the Festivitate, but then it says for Masses, for Saturday, um, and other masses and votives regarding the mysterium, special mysteries. Then you have this veneratione. So that's the only thing that the MC would really need to know because when they get to this, they would have to point out which one it is for the priest. The priest should know himself, however. So that's it. I know there's a lot covered in that video. Um, it is a little bit more complex, as I mentioned. Very important to have a good sense of the flow of the Mass and what, the, what compiles the Missal, Rom Missale Romanum. Uh, and then after that, you just have to have a strong sense of what the liturgical calendar rubrics are. There's no way getting around that. There's no quick, quick, uh, quick cheat sheet for that. Uh, other than that, I, I encourage you to just get used to flipping through the pages, getting a sense of how the, the Missal is laid out. So if you want to be able to properly set it up for the priest, 
you can do so. And of course, before any Mass, always have the priest review what you've set up so that he's not caught off guard in the midst of Mass. So God bless you and happy serving.